There are so many ways that you can kill productivity, whether it's just you or your data team, you know that it happens, right? Like every time you start a new company, you swear this time it will be different, right? You're going to be organized. You're going to be planned. But just like in Jurassic Park, life finds a way to pull us back into our bad habits. We're just suddenly doing everything we know we shouldn't be. Suddenly we're trying to juggle, you know, tons of ad hoc requests, long-term plans and initiatives and goals, and it's just chaos. So how do you actually manage to get things done in that situation? Let's first talk about the things that will definitely kill your productivity and then how to better approach it. So let's dive into problem number one. And you probably know this, we all do this context switching. And I don't just mean again, on the micro level where it's like, hey, let me switch onto my phone. Let me scroll through reels. I also mean one of the big things that I've seen kill data teams in terms of productivity is they switch initiatives constantly. That is to say maybe you know, you start on project one for like a week or two and you get it to a certain point, but it's not a good pausing point. But suddenly an executive comes in and is like, hey, we really need this ad hoc data request. And then you figure out, oh, it's going to take me a week. So you pause that prior project and now you're kind of interjecting another project in there and you, you do that request. And then you kind of come back a week and a half later and, you know, you're kind of in a, in a little bit of a spell. You're like, okay, where were we last time? Did anyone write down what we were doing what where do we finish and you kind of have to spend the first day just getting back into what you were doing and then kind of get back into it and going with the flow again right it's like a larger version of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when we constantly context switch you're constantly having to remember what was i doing before i decided to open youtube oh yeah i was looking for something in a different tab so it's just this constant barrage of task after task after task without ever getting done done, which is what I usually like to call it. Next, I like to call it bad meeting hygiene. That is to say, have you ever been in that situation where you put a meeting on the books and it actually was helpful at first, right? Like, hey, we're having some touch bases, we're dealing with actual problems, and you've put up that meeting on the books for the next six months, and somewhere down the line, right, that meeting becomes pointless. You, you keep going through it, no one's really providing any value people are just doing it because they feel like they should be doing that meeting and especially now uh, today with things being remote people might not even be on camera they might not be fully engaged they're doing something else honestly even when we were in person i remember there were meetings sometimes at facebook that i would be on my laptop working while in a meeting because it's like well i have to finish this other thing and i wouldn't be fully engaged and then the question becomes is there any point to being in that meeting or should you leave or should that meeting even exist and we'll talk about that in solutions another clear issue I see in terms of like productivity and things that can kill productivity is a team that lacks a mission. That is to say, like, if you do not have kind of some clear North Stars that your specific data team, honestly, your organization, but you know, if you were to take that down and focus just on your team, like just a clear set of like North Stars that you're like, this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is why we, you know, impact the business. If you don't have that, you're just going to constantly be getting pulled into every which direction, right? Hey, can you help me with this automation project? Hey, can you do this for me? You know, I know you don't work on marketing data, but can you do some analysis for me real fast? And if you haven't written down a clear mission, right? Like this is what I want to do. An example I gave, I'll put up here in an article I just wrote was something like generic, like, uh, you know, to empower our organization to be more customer centric by providing uh, insights and drive operational excellence, enhance personalized customer experience and maximize profitability across every channel, right? Like some something just even if it's high level that just helps you say like, hey, we're really just focused mostly on customer data and, you know, taking that and making us, you know, operationally better. That way, when people come and bring you some problem, you can actually say like, hey, that's not what we're currently focused on, you know, based on what the business goal is currently, right? Like you're talking about the business goal first and then how we've translated that and internalized that this just doesn't fit, right? Like even if we do this project, there's no business resources to actually implement it uh, or execute. So it really isn't worth our time currently. And so these things really do kill teams. Like again, working across multiple industries and organization sizes, I've just seen these issues pop up over and over again in, again, every context. So how do you ensure that you get stuff done? Let's talk about some solutions. So one, break up your projects into phases. This probably seems obvious, but I don't think a lot of people do it. You know, you're gonna have context switching regardless. You have some need to do ad hoc work here and there, things are gonna come in the way. The problem is if you try to approach your project without clear phases, what ends up happening is it makes it very hard for your team to stay flexible, right? Like if you do need to make changes, it's hard to adjust because you have one big project that you have to complete. It's also tough to assess when certain parts of a project are done. I was just doing a migration project with a company. And again, it kind of came in the weird halfway, half done, half not. 
and it's hard to assess if you haven't clearly set up phases whether you know hey did we migrate the table part of this migration is that all done right uh, did we migrate all the stored procedure parts of, of this table right or this migration is that all done great and honestly even before that like did we have all the pre-work the pre-work phase where we maybe looked at everything first is that done after that did we pick the right tools etc and like if you break it into those clear steps it just makes it easier when you get asked to do maybe some ad hoc request to be like hey we can't take that on right now we need to finish this phase you know it's gonna be another few weeks but at the end of when we finish that we can take a quick pause if this is important that's a different part of this whole discussion but if it's important to take it on it also just generally creates tension if you don't have clear phases because you when you're talking to the business how do you tell them how far along the project is if you can say like hey we've already completed phases two and three we're on four and we should complete it in the next two months and then we have five it just makes it much smoother next i would say what you should do is have a clear set of goals and priorities right you always want to be able to go back and say like hey this is just not a priority right now you know we have for the next three to six months these two initiatives right and that is our big focus. For the next three months, we're trying to accomplish whatever. We're trying to build these new data pipelines. We're trying to improve the data model. And that's our focus. Now, my often caveat there is you have to do number three in terms of my tips, which is expect ad hoc data requests. That was something we just did at Facebook. It's like, you just have to assume, right? Like you cannot overburden yourself. If you're in your planning phase of, of your team, of your data team, and you're saying we have 100% capacity, like you've planned it all out, you are going to be over capacity, right? Because there will be ad hoc data requests. There will be ad hoc asks. You should just generally assume, I don't know what the right number is for you, but probably some in the range of at least 20% of your time, every, whatever your planning session is, you know, three months, six months, et cetera, is going to be ad hoc data requests regardless. Because if you plan it that way, then you can more effectively plan your initiatives and you're not overburdening your data team. Number four, uh, you probably heard this happening recently, or at least in the last few years, was get rid of meetings that you don't need, right? Like this happened with Shopify, right? There's this whole quote about how they deleted over 300,000 meetings back in 2023. They had a bot. They got rid of anything that were reoccurring meetings with three or more people. And they just got rid of it. Because at a certain point, you just go through these meetings and you just go through the motions. You're like, all right, yeah, I got these tasks done. And it really doesn't do anything, right? Like you could have just sent an email as long as you have good cadence, right? Like you do have to have good ownership of people, make sure you write the correct updates uh, to the project manager. You know, it's one of those meetings that like everyone is like sighing a relief that it's like, oh, thank God someone, they, everyone canceled today kind of situation. Like if you have those meetings, just remove them. They are not useful. If you're not doing anything on them. And then finally, my last tip is create space for deep work, uh, right? Like I have this one example of like the worst day I've had in terms of meetings where I had a meeting like every other 30 minutes, right? So 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. And look, maybe you can get stuff done in that 30 minutes. It's really hard for me to re-engage deep work, you know, if I'm constantly getting shifted out. You know, every once in a while, it's fine, right? Like have a 30 minute meeting, go back to 30 minute work, 30 minute meeting. If that's just once in the day, fine. You know, you can plan out in that 30 minutes to do emails and some quick one-off tasks. But there's only so much of that work and eventually you need to get back into deep work. So just plan that out. Make sure you have either the one side or the other of your day set for meetings. That way you can just focus on that and not be distracted, uh, you know, for the next half of the day. Like I, I usually like to do mornings, although I can mix it up depending on what I need. But I usually do my meetings in the morning and then I can focus on deep work in the end of the day. And the truth is, whether you're working to get stuff done as an individual or a team, like these things really do impact your ability to deliver good work, right? It's great to learn new technology, but if you can't deliver good work, it really doesn't matter. So do, if you're not, try to implement some of these strategies into your day to day to make sure you're actually delivering what you say you're going to deliver. With that, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.